Hey guys, in this video we are going to install 23 solar panels and 2 Tesla Powerwall 3 and so far it was most complicated install because of the solar panels layout. If you're interested, let's jump into the video. Here's the two power walls in reusable package and the 23 solar panels. We're going to use GA Solar 405 watts each panel. And uh, here's the roof before panels installation. And we have two different materials here. First is asphalt shingles roof and then we have portion of the roof with a low slope with rolled composition roof. Here's the plans and uh, we're gonna have six panels right here. Then four panels on the right side, one panel behind. And then we're gonna have seven panels on this part of roof, which is not visible, and five there. So it's complicated layout, and we will have to run a lot of conduits. And right here we have rolled composition roof. I'm going to use mounts from Unirac. And uh, right here how it looks, so we have rubber seal around and then it's, we're supposed to go into the rafter with uh, two bolts and the bolt is right here. And then after installation we just put sealant and uh, it's going to seal all around and exit from here. It's in a package with uh, this one we're getting sealant as well. Additionally we're getting bolts to attach reckon. Let's install one of these. I'm marking 48 inch from previous rafter, but still I'm going to double check with the rubber mallet that rafter located there. I don't have perfect ears to hear sound difference, but I'm placing my hand and uh, when you're hitting with a rubber mallet, you will feel much less vibration when you're hitting on the rafter, because the decking doesn't have so much play. What is nice about this, we're don't need to drill the roof, it's self-tapping bolts and it's going right into the rafter. One downside of this system is we have to use this really carefully to locate rafters because we don't have much room for error. We just have it's three quarters for the error for to locate rafters. However, even if we miss the rafter, then we can use all six uh, holes here attached with six bolts and this is allowed to attach to decking, not to the rafter. And we got into the rafter. And that's all. Pretty fast installation compared to traditional flashing system. Two hours later we have all of these elephants installed. Right here we have all rafters drilled. We need to seal and install this one. Install there, install there. And as you can see it's combination between this style and the iron edge. And uh, that's it, 10 L foods took 10 minutes, 1 minute for each to seal. Next step, I'm going to install rails or cut rails and uh, then seal all of these L foods at the same time. And the reason is because it's possible that some of the L foods might be slightly rotated. And uh, if we seal this before and sealant will dry, if we move L foot, it's possible that it's going to create micro crack or something like that. But if we do fresh sealant and install right after, then even if it's rotated, the sealant will still be good and seal all penetrations. Just a quick note here, on the next day, I did notice that sealant was still sticky. So that means we have enough time to seal uh, L foots at the same time when we install them, and we can install a reckon at least in the next eight hours. Okay. 
So finishing day one. So what we did today is did all conduits for all arrays, sub arrays. Took a lot of time to run all of them. Plus we have to do one inch conduit here because it's going to be four strings going down from the roof. And then we'll need to add support for conduit. Right there is a penetration down to the roof where power wall is going to be installed. On the next day, we can start lifting panels on the roof and start installing them. Because this is Tesla, we are using MCI 2 for rapid shutdown, so it's much easier to organize wires and uh, it's faster installation compared to AP Smart or Tiger rapid shutdown devices. After installing solar panels, we did run four strings from a roof, so it's in total it's going to be nine wires, four positive, four negative, and one ground wire. And we can start attaching mount brackets for power walls and hang power walls. Power wall 3 is a pretty heavy unit, it's about 300 pounds, so we need to make sure that we are touching mounting bracket into the studs. For main panel right here we have one breaker 150 amps and uh, then this wire is going into our sub panel and uh, for Tesla power walls for two of them we need a 60 amps breaker so what I'm going to do is to install this new panel and uh, then it's going to be 60 amps 60 amps and the wires connected to our existing electrical panel. When installing an electrical panel, usually I'm removing the door, so the panel is going to weigh less and uh, we're going to have much more room to install this. Each power wall needs own AC disconnect, so wires from power wall will go to AC disconnect and then to circuit breaker. The city did reject 9540 certification from Tesla, so we have to follow 3 feet distance between power walls. In this video we are lifting power wall just in a few seconds, but in reality it took multiple attempts and I did place order for a Tesla dolly, so for next installation hopefully we don't need to lift them manually anymore. Next step is to run conduit between power wall and main electrical panel and uh, inside this conduit we are not gonna have any DC current so we can use PVC material. And so far running PVC conduit it was most relaxing and common job.
Main electrical panel connected with new sub panel by 2 inch conduit. Now I'm going to run wires between power walls and electrical panel. For each power wall we need to run 3 6 gauge wires for leg 1, leg 2 neutral and then we're gonna run one common ground wire. I'm running wires just myself, so first I did run steel fish tape and now I'm attaching wires and lubricating conduit and then I'm just going to push wires from one side and steel tape is gonna be guide for wires to run. And here's the wires from other side. Now I'm going to run wires between new sub panel and the existing main panel. Just a quick tip. Painting wires is much faster than using electrical tape to identify them. To connect wires together, I'm going to use three port insulated splice connectors. Now we have main panel connected to two sub panels. Next step is to connect two power walls to solar panels. Now we have wires split, two strings are gonna go to one power wall and two other strings are gonna go to other to maximize DC charging efficiency. And now we are going to run three wires, two for rapid shutdown buttons and one for communication with the Tesla backup switch. And it's gonna go to first power wall through this strain relief connector and then for second rapid shutdown it's gonna go to other power wall. Here is a Tesla backup switch and uh, it's going to be installed behind the electrical meter and the electric company is gonna do this. We can install only one rapid shutdown button but we should install two contacts to control each power wall. This is other side of communication cable and uh, it's going to be connected to first power wall. After finishing all wiring, I commissioned a system and because Tesla backup switch is not yet connected to the grid, we can only charge power walls from a solar, we cannot discharge this yet. And we are charging with 7.3 kilowatts. Now we can install front covers and the system is ready for inspection. Alright guys, that's all about this video, as always, thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.